right, so now we're going to create a truth table. So to create a truth table, I will give you some sort of a statement. Something that you can use to format your truth table. So the first thing you want to do is look at this statement and say how many variables are in this statement. So I've got P, Q, Q, and R. So I've got three separate variables. For three variables, you need to know that you have eight options that you could do. So you're going to have eight options, eight rows. I will give you either two variables or three. If I give you two, you have four options. If I give you three, you have eight. You need to know that and you know, need to know what the options are. So the first thing you're going to do anytime with truth tables is start by just setting up a basic truth table. You're going to have all of your options, all of your variables, P, Q, and R. Column for P, column for Q, and column for R. Okay. Then here you're going to put your statement. Do not P, if not P, then Q. Or if Q, or sorry, or Q and R. Then we're going to look and say, okay, I'm going to create a column for not P. A column for the conditional, a column for the Q. The disjunction, the Q, the conjunction, and the R. Make sure you understand the names of these symbols. Make sure you know the names of these symbols. I'm going to give you the symbols on the test and you've got to be able to tell me what the name is. You've got to be able to do a matching. So I'll give you a word bank and then I'll give you the symbols and you've got to say which name goes to which symbol. So make sure you know the names. On a conditional, make sure you know what the antecedent is and the consequent is. If it helps, think about a conditional with actions and consequences. Actions come before consequences. The antecedent comes before the conditional, whereas the consequent comes after the conditional. If that helps any. So to continue on with our truth table, we have the truth table set up. Now we need to get our first three columns done. So before even worrying about the statement columns yet, you need to get your eight options. Again, three columns, eight options. The first column for P, you can do four trues and four falses is one way to organize it. I do four trues and four falses. Four true, four false. Then when you go to Q, you're going to cut this number, the four and four, cut it in half. You're going to do two trues and two falses. I've got true, true, false, false. Then repeat, true, true, false, false, until you have all eight of your options. Okay. Column R, I'm going to take Q's numbers. Cut them in half. So I took P, cut that in half for Q, Q, cut it in half for R. It's going to be one T and one false. True, false. Then repeat. True, false. Keep repeating until you have that entire column finished. So you have eight options. Try to keep these as organized as possible. If they get disorganized, you're not going to be able to tell which columns you're trying to do, what rows you're on to get these things done correctly. If you want to use graph paper to organize your thoughts, do that. Take advantage of that. I'm a fan of color coding. If you want to use different colors, use different colors. See what makes the most sense to you. What helps you out the most? What helps somebody else may not be what helps you. Every person learns differently. Okay. So everything right here that I've done so far should be just basic setup memorization. You should have the first three columns memorized. Four and four, two, two, two and two, one, 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 one. Okay. Then all I have is my statement and I've just broken it up into columns. The first columns I'm going to fill in in my statement are ones that I can just copy over. 
So not P, I've got to do a negation to that. I'm not going to do that one yet. I'm going to work easy to hard. Q, I don't have to do anything to Q. I can just take this entire column and rewrite it here. So Q is true, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. So I'm going to do true, true, false, false, trying to keep my rows even. True, true, false, false. That is one of the first ones I'm going to put down. Here I'm copying Q again. It's again one of the first layers that I am putting down. I'm just copying them over. False. False. Try to keep those rows even. Put a number as to when you're putting these in. This is my first time going through just putting the easy ones down. You're more than welcome to put one, two, and three if you want. I do just ones for the first layer two for the next layer, three for the third layer, so on and so forth. R, I can copy that over again. There's nothing being done to that R. The conjunction has an entirely separate column. So I'm going to take R's column, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and copy it exactly over to here. Trying to keep my rows even. and some record of what order you're putting the columns in. Because once we get to here, you're going to look at the last column you put in. If you don't know which column you did last on that side and which column you did last on this side, it will make you confused as to which one to use for your, for your disjunction. Okay. So I've done all the columns I can just copy and don't have to do anything to. I don't have to think to just copy it over. And then you're going to go and do the ones that are your negations, your simple things. All you're doing is reversing it. You don't have to think of any rules. You don't have to have anything memorized. You're just reversing the truth value. So we have not P. So we're going to take P's column and we're just going to reverse the truth value. Where it is true, we're going to put false. Where it's false, we're going to put true. So the first row is true for P, so not P will be false. Second row is true, we're going to keep it, change it to false. True, change to false. True, change to false. Then P becomes false, we're going to change that to true. It's false, we're going to change it to true. False, we change to true. It's a second layer that I've done. The first layer was just copying it over. Second layer was my negations. Okay. Now I'm going to look in here and say, okay, I've got a set of parentheses, disjunction set of parentheses. I need to do inside the parentheses before I can do the disjunction. If you think back to your order of operations, we always had to complete inside the parentheses first. Same thing here. We've got to complete the inside first. So we have a conditional. For a conditional, the only time a conditional is false is if it is true, then false. It's the only time a conditional will ever be false. That's something you should memorize to make this process go a little bit easier. You are going to have quite a few truth tables on this test. It is a timed test. So you must be able to do these quickly and efficiently. I would write it down. Conditional is only false when true, false. Every time you use one of these rules, write it down so that you'll have it memorized even better. Plus then you can always look down here and you're not constantly having to think of the rule. You can just look down and say, okay, yeah, that was only false when true, false. So we're going to look at the conditional. Inside the parentheses, you want the last column filled in on the left and the last column filled in on the right, inside the parentheses. So it's just the two right around it. False than true. Conditionals are only false when true, false. This is not true, false, so it is not false. It is true. Only false when true, false. False, true, still true. False, false, still true. False, false, still true. So far the entire first one has been false, so there's no way it could be false. Only false 
when true, false. True, true, it's not true, false, can't be false. True, 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 false. Remember, conditionals are only false when true, false. The more you say that, the better it's going to be. And true, false. So my column, my rows kind of got a little bit disorganized. And that's okay. You can just go and draw a line so you can keep track of where you are. Okay. So that was, I did one, two. That would be my third layer that I've put in. Can't do the conjunction yet because I've got to finish inside of parentheses. I finished this set of parentheses, but I have not yet finished this set of parentheses. So I've got to finish it first. I've got Q and R. So this is a conjunction. And conjunctions are only true when both are true. Only true when both are true. Again, need to have these memorized. I have a whole list of them inside of PowerPoint that you also have. So look at those, make sure you have those down. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do these efficiently. You're going to make a mistake somewhere and one mistake can throw your entire answer off. This is not an easy test. These are tedious. They're real easy to accidentally grab a wrong column or to put the wrong truth value. Be careful, take your time, make sure you're doing them efficiently so you take the maximum amount of effort for your time. Okay? The least amount of effort for your time, sorry. So only true when both are true. So you're comparing inside the parentheses, left and right of the symbol. Only true when both are true. Both are true, so it will be true. Both aren't true, it's not true. Both are not true, both are not true, both are true. Only true when both are true. Both are not true, both are not true, both are not true. Conjunctions are only true when both are true. Conditionals are only false when it's true, false. So when that's the third layer I have put in, I've only got one column left. Right. So in this last column, we're doing a disjunction. So again, you need to know the rule for disjunction. Disjunction is only false when both are false. Okay. Only false when both are false. They're both not false, you're going to put a true. Okay. So we're looking at this column. We need to look left and right of it. On the left, you want the last column that was filled in. Since we labeled it, we know that's the green column. That's the third one we filled in on this side. So we're going to compare this column to the last column filled in on the right. Again, would be our green. One, one, and three. It's the last one we filled in. So we're going to compare that to this. And that one that I just messed up. That is a false. Okay. So row one. Got a true and a true. Disjunctions are only false when both is false. They're not both false, so it cannot be false. Must be true. True and false. Disjunctions are only false when both are false. Cannot be false, they are not both false. True and false, still not both false. True and false, not both false, so it cannot be false. True and true, true and false. False and false. Here, both are false. Your answer is false. Both are false. Your answer is false. Last column we put in. In my math lab, this last column is your answer column. 
My math lab has a horrible flaw to it right now. It does not have good quality questions. It will never make you create an entire truth table because it's not programmed to do so. That takes a lot of programming to do that. So it doesn't have that option to be able to do that. However, on the test, you will have to do it. Your test is not through my math lab. Your test is through Blackboard. You will have to create an entire truth table. So your answer is not only this column on the test. Your answer is the entire thing. I want to see it all. Remember, negations change your truth value. Conditionals are only false when it is true than false. Disjunctions are only false when both are false. Conjunctions are only true when both are true. And the one that was not used is your biconditional. Biconditional is only true when they are both the same. So if they're not both the same, it would come out false. And that's your double arrow. It's like a conditional with the arrow on both ends. Any questions, please email me.